everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure that you're following me over on Instagram. I post lots of great short form content over there that you don't want to miss out on. I give a lot of little tips and tricks and hacks, so be sure to follow me. Now in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to make some felt logo tags that you can put on soft stuff like these crochet stuffies, you can use them on blankets, hats, knitted things, all sorts of really fun things and they're easy to do, super, super simple and I've just added them to the back of these little guys and it's so fun, so easy. These also are great sellers so if you're somebody who wants to sell things, there are so many crocheters out there that would love to buy these types of tags for their products, so it's something to look into. You only need a few supplies to do this, so it's super simple. One thing is you'll need some heat and bond, which you can get Amazon, Michaels, Joann's. I'm gonna link everything that we're using down below. You're gonna need heat tape, a sublimation printer, sublimation paper, sublimation ink, plus butcher paper, and then you're also gonna need a Cricut and some felt, plus a Cricut mat, of course. But again, I'll link everything that you need for this down below. This is a really fun and simple thing that you can do and I can't wait to show you how to make everything. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and make our circles and then I'll show you how to make a quick logo over in Canva. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. What I love about this tutorial is the Cricut part is super quick and super easy. So we'll start there because honestly, this is the easiest part. All you simply have to do, and you can do this without any design space access, is to open up a shape. You can use any shape that you want, but I prefer to use a circle for my designs. But really, if you want a star, a heart, whatever you want to use, that's up to you. Now, I find a two inch circle to be a little bit big unless I'm doing a really, really big stuffy. But for this, I prefer to do like a 1.1 inch, maybe 1.2 inch circle. So I just change my sizing up here at the top. From here, all I have to do now is simply click make it. You just have to make your circle. Now I know for a fact that I'm using a nine by 12 sheet of felt for this. So I wanna change my material size to the nine by 12, but I also wanna make a bunch of them. I don't wanna make just one. So rather than duplicating it a ton over in the canvas, I'm going to use my project copies and I'm just going to just put 60 in and just see how many it allows me to put on the size that I'm doing. Now keep in mind you'll always have to change back the size to your 9 by 12 sheet or it's just going to give you such a hassle. So you will always have to change your sizing right back down. Now I can see here that I have one, two, three, four, five, six too many, which means I can fit 54 on one sheet of felt in a nine by 12 size. So I'm just changing the, the number at the top of project copies, clicking apply, and then changing the page size. So my paper size or my material size. That's all I simply have to do. And then it's gonna cut out 54 of these, which is great. We're gonna have a little bit of felt waste, but that's okay. I'm not really worried about that little tiny bit that is there. I'm gonna hit continue and I'm using my Cricut Maker, which I do prefer to use a maker for this, but you can absolutely do this with the Explore or even the Joy, both will work. Now for mine, I do prefer a certain type of felt. So I'm gonna go into my Browse All Materials and I'm gonna search the word felt because I do prefer to cut with my rotary blade, but if you're using the fine point blade, it will work as well. But I use the felt acrylic fabric cut setting. Again, you're gonna wanna cut your felt on what works best for you. My cut settings may not be exactly what works for your cut settings. Then I'm gonna hit done. And you'll see that it offers me my tool options here. So I want to use my rotary blade in my clamp B and then we're just ready to cut. So this is the really simple part is cutting these out. So let's head over to the machine and I'll show you them cutting. Now, if you already have a logo, you can totally skip this part, but I'm just going to make a really quick logo over here in Canva. I'm not going to do anything too crazy. We're just going to show you just a quick way that you can make something pretty easy. So I just like using the Instagram square post for my template here. And then all I want to do is just sort of like figure out, you know, a template. So for me personally, I like to just use text on mine and I'm just going to make mine 
just say my name because I think that that's probably like the easiest way to do it. Um, there are lots of great options for how you can do text. You can um, just use their text. You can use some of these for free. So if you are not a Canva Pro member, you are going to be a little bit more limited on what you can do. But there are lots of options over here that you can do with Canva Pro or without. They, if they don't have a little crown by them, you can use them for your uh, purposes if you're not a Pro member. But with the little crown, those are only for Pro members. But for this, I'm just going to add text and I'm just going to use my name. Um, cause that's literally the name of my business is just my name. I'm not fancy. I didn't come up with some crazy name. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to find a font that I like, and you can choose anything that you want to, whatever makes you happy, whatever really like is your jam, your vibe. I like a, uh, script font, but if you want something a little easier to read, you can absolutely use something more plain, whatever really works for you. Like I said, there's not a wrong answer to this. Or if you already have a logo made up, that's fine too. So I'm just going to use this one and I'm going to make it bigger because I want to be able to see what I'm doing really quick. And then I'll make it smaller when we go to make it in Inkscape. Because I personally prefer to print through Inkscape and I'll show you why here in a minute. Um, but I am going to change my line spacing. They're a little far apart and I feel like I could squish them together a little bit more without it looking super squished. So I think that looks good. You can change your line spacing up here at the top. Now I want some sort of like a background design to this. I don't want it to just be my name and plain. Now you can, if that's what you want, up to you. Whatever makes you happy, whatever design you want. Now you can see here that I did use a few things recently, but what I'm gonna do is just search for the word splash. And that's gonna bring me a bunch of different like diff like things I can use for background, a splash design. So it's really up to you what you want it to look like. There's no right or wrong. Like I think these are really cute and would be sort of fun to like put around my name. Like how cute is that? Um, that could be super fun. You can do uh, a full background if you want like this yellow splash if you want to make it like really big and kind of have it cover the background behind your name. And then I just want to go to layer. I right click, go to layer, and I just send to back. You know, do what you want to do. I don't like that. I actually really like this. I think that's super cute. Now keep in mind you are working in a circle. So something a little more circle-y is not necessarily a bad thing. Like this one's really cute. It's a little more colorful. So like I said, just sort of find something that you like. There's not really a right or wrong way to do it. If you, like I said, if you already have a logo, cool. You don't have to do this part. If you don't have a logo, also cool. I just really think that these are fun and I kind of like those, but I don't think they're the right shape. So I'm just going to go ahead and use these and I'm going to rotate this one. Now you can see that my name is definitely like different sizes. Like it's a little smaller on one end than it is on the other. So just to kind of round everything out, I might just leave that off. I think I'm just gonna use these two and basically be done with it. Um, again, do whatever you like, it's up to you. You can add any elements, you can do stuff like this. Again, right click on it, go to layer and send it to the back to put it behind your name. You do what you want to do, up to you. Um, but one that I really like, I used last time was the super colorful splash and I'll just use that one again, just to show you guys what I did the first time. So this is just sort of a rainbow splash. I'm gonna make it kind of big cause I want it to take up quite a bit of the space around my name. And then I want it centered. Right click on it and I'm going to layer and send it to the back. I think that looks pretty good. Now you can always kind of play around with this, add things, use effects. Um, one that's really fun is to use the outline and then just change it to white and that'll help your name stand out from the splash a little bit. You can change the thickness of that. You can make it really, really thick. You can make it super thin. Lots of ways to kind of play with this and do your own design. But I think I'll leave it like that. I think that looks fine. Now, all I have to do is go to the share button and simply click download. Now. One thing is if you're doing this with Canva Pro, you can do a transparent background. If you're not doing it with Canva Pro, no transparent background, but it's really not gonna matter. So don't worry about it. I'm just gonna do transparent since I have the option, but you don't have to. It will not matter with the way that we're doing this. 
once it's ready to download and everything, I'm going to put it into my folder for my felt logo tags. And I'm just going to call this tag image. That way I know what it is. Now, like I said, we're going to be using Inkscape, but you can really do this in any program that you want to. So don't worry that I'm doing it in Inkscape and you're not. But it is very simple and it's super easy to set up in Inkscape, which is why I like using it. Inkscape is a free program that you can download from inkscape.org. And what I want to do is I'm going to go to file and I'm going to choose import. I'm going to go to my quick access because it should be like right there at the top tag image, select that. And then with this little box, you don't have to do anything. Just click OK. Now you'll see that my image is loaded and it is really, really big. So I want to size this down so that it's going to fit within my circle. Now you'll notice that the edges are a little bit out from the edges of my box. So I'm able to just change this to 1.2 inches and it'll have enough of a buffer around it that it will fit within our 1.2 inch circle. What I'm gonna do is up here at the top, you'll see that just like Cricut Design Space, you have a width, a lock, a height, and then the measurement units. Click the lock to close it and change your measurement units to inches. Then you can just simply change the height or the width to 1.2. Now it is tiny, so I'm gonna zoom in. And I do wanna make sure to do one more thing. I'm gonna to go to File. I'm gonna to go to Document Properties. And I'm going to select US Letter. Mine typically defaults to A4 no matter what I do. And yours might too. So that's just a quick little trick. Now what I have is my logo in a 1.2 inch size. And you'll see that we have a ton of paper. Now remember, we're gonna be able to do 54 of those circles on one sheet of felt. So we should be able to do quite a bit of this logo as well. So what I like to do is I'm gonna right click on it and click copy, then I'm going to click paste. And you'll see now that we have two. Now, one thing you'll notice is see how it's kind of trying to go corner to corner? I don't really want it to do that just in case they overlap. If yours is doing that, what you wanna do is find your tool that is the snapping tool and just turn it off. And now you can move these freely without them trying to stick together. It's up to you however you wanna do it. Now I wanna do a few of the logos across and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get everything lined up really, really easily because it's so simple to do this. But I should be able to fit, I wanna say like six across. One, two, three, four, yeah, I can fit six across. Now that we're ready to arrange, what I want you to do is make sure everything is selected on your screen and you can change one or the other, but not both. So I want this to be eight rows and it will end up being six columns. I did test this. So just sort of count and see how many rows you have and just change the rows and it should do the columns automatically. I'm gonna click arrange and you'll see that now it's all equally spaced and then I can move the entire selection on my screen. Now they do look a little bit far apart. So what I can do is I can click set spacing and you can change this to like inches and you can change it down a little bit. So X is where I wanna change that spacing down a smidge. So I'm just gonna use this down button and I'm just gonna click arrange and that's obviously way too close. So it was at 0.18. So let's try one nine and just try and see if we can space these out a little bit more so that they fit better, but they're not overlapping and they fit a little nicer onto the page. That way we're not having like this huge edge here, but we're also not having a lot of issues where it's going to cut off the edges from our print. So you'll wanna play with this a little bit and kind of figure out where you want your designs to be. So right now, this looks like it's gonna be pretty good at a uh, 0.15. I don't think it'll cut off the edges anywhere, but we can just sort of look, double check. It looks like it's pretty good. Again, you can definitely change either one of these. So like you could change this to like 1.14 and then just click arrange and it'll sort of move them around a little bit and make them a little closer together. And that way you're going to just have a little more leeway on the edges. I know working with a line can be a little bit crazy and a range can be a little crazy, but once you play with it, you'll get it. I still fumble with it just a little bit as well, but I think it works pretty okay. Now, there are two ways that you can mirror this because we're doing sublimation and we need to mirror our design to print it through our sublimation printer. You can either select your entire design and choose the flip option and you'll see that that mirrors it or... You can go to file, 
and go to print. And then when you're setting up your print to send it to your printer so you make sure you get the best quality, you can do the mirroring in there. But I'm gonna show you how to do all the preferences while we're in here. So make sure you have your sublimation printer selected and choose preferences. Make sure you have the correct paper size. And then I change mine to premium presentation paper matte. You wanna change your quality to high and make sure color is selected. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't have all of these options, it's because your printer drivers were not installed fully or correctly. Go to your manufacturer's website, which typically it's gonna be Epson, Find your manufacturers, like the brand or the model number of your printer, and you can find the drivers very, very easily there, and that way you can get all the options that you need. Now from here, we just went to more options, and I'm gonna turn off my high-speed print. I'm going to turn on my mirror image. That's gonna create that backwards image that we need for printing purposes with our sublimation. Now you can click OK and click Print to send it to your printer. Now one thing that I do personally for my tags to make them hold on better is to apply heat and bond to the back of your felt. You could absolutely skip this step if you wanted to, but for me, I find this to be super important. I get this big five yard roll, usually from Michaels or Joann's, but you can find it on Amazon. I'll link it in the description down below. What I do is I roll it out and I place my felt just on top of it. And I am not a great straight line cutter, as you can tell. So it's okay if it doesn't fully cover like the very, very edge of your felt because Cricut's not gonna cut on that little edge anyways. So I just try to line it up best I can here at the bottom. And if it's not perfect, really truly it's okay. And then I usually will pull it down a little bit because again, the Cricut isn't going to cut all of those edges. And if there's a little spot that doesn't have the heat and bond, it's not going to affect it in any way. So then I'm just going to go ahead and cut this out. And like I said, it does not have to be perfect. It's really okay if it's a little smaller than your felt because it's just there's an edge to the Cricut when it cuts. All right, so we're going to slide that over. Now what you want to make sure that you do is that your felt is under your heat and bond so it's when you put it on your heat press it's going to go this way felt on the bottom you want this textured shiny side touching your felt and then this matte paper side is what's going to be on your heat press now i do highly recommend protecting your heat press uh, with a teflon sheet just like you would any time you press and then i like to just make sure i don't have any real overhang from the heat and bond because that will get on like your press or it can get on your um, like pressing pillow. So just kind of double check it, make sure there's not any overhang. If there is, I just trim it off. It's like I said, the Cricut isn't going to cut the very, very bottom or the edges of the sheet. So just trimming off a little bit will help prevent it from making a mess on my pressing pillow. Now I press this at about 305 degrees for about eight seconds. So I'll take you over to the heat press. Now keep in mind, you can use a Cricut Easy Press for this. You could use a home iron for this portion, but when it comes to the sublimation, you're gonna need to use a press that can get up to 400 degrees. This is the heat press that I use. It is a StarCraft 15 by 15. So you can see I have a pressing pillow, the felt, and then the heat and bond. I'm using a medium to firm pressure for this, and I do have a Teflon sheet. So all I'm gonna do is press this for eight seconds. And once that's done pressing, go ahead and lift up your press. Now, like I said, I did use pretty firm pressure on that, so it was a little difficult to lift. Now, what you want to do is allow this to cool. You can absolutely move it, take it off your press to let it cool, but you need to let it cool for the full time so that it can very easily and safely be removed. Now that it's cool, you can go ahead and take the backing off. And this is just like removing backing from like HTV. But I will warn you that sometimes it does rip. That's okay, don't worry about it. You can still peel it off. I'll just rip it just so you can see. So you can see here that it ripped, no big deal. Just start peeling again. It's totally fine. Now I did get some dog hair under one, but that's no big deal. So now you have this nice piece of felt that you're going to be able to place on your mat. But we need to do one more thing before we place stuff on our mat. We need to change our tool. Now you can do this with the fine point blade, with the Cricut Explorer, with the, with the uh, Joy, 
or with the maker, but I really like to use my rotary blade, especially when doing circles. I just find it gives it a really nice clean cut. So I'm going to take out my fine point blade from clamp B and place in my rotary blade. Then all I simply need to do is place this on a mat. Now you can really use any sticky mat that you have. I personally like to use a strong grip mat when I'm working with felt, especially because I just think it's gonna hold it a little bit tighter. And I like to use that strong grip mat for this. So what I'm gonna do is take my felt and I'm gonna place it on to my mat. And it doesn't matter which corner you put it in, it just matters which way you load it. Now I am going to use the brayer on this. So I am gonna go ahead and just use my brayer and take it over the felt just to make sure that it's well held down. The next thing that we need to do is select our cut setting, which I um, am gonna use the acrylic felt setting as I told you. So we'll go ahead and choose that and then we'll get this cut. unload one thing that I really always recommend you do regardless of what you're cutting is just check that cut by just peeling back a corner of your item and just making sure that it looks like it cut now you may have some little spots where it's gonna like grab and not want to kind of come apart because the circles are pretty close together so you have some really thin areas like right here where it's really thin but it looks like it cut the circles fine so I'm gonna go ahead and unload this and I'm going to go ahead and move my machine out of the way. And then again, we're just going to go ahead and peel. Now, I'm not worried about keeping any of the felt, the leftovers. They're not really worth saving. So I'm going to go ahead and just peel this off. Now, like I said, you may have some little pieces that want to stick a little bit. This felt a little fuzzier than I prefer, but it works pretty well. Um, I will link a couple different felts that I prefer in the uh, video's description. But I'm just gonna go ahead and pop all these off and they may stick somewhat to your uh, backing like your felt. See how it's kind of ripping where those little thin lines are? Totally fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this off just like this just to kind of get it off and then we'll get all of the circles taken off the mat as we go because like I said, they are gonna like rip where these little thin lines are. That's just the nature of the felt. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these all off and then I'm gonna show you our next step. You want to make sure you keep the backing for your heat and bond. I almost forgot, threw it away, so I had to go get it back, but that happens. And then what I do is I'll just grab some of my circles and I lay them out with the heat and bond side down along the sheet. You don't have to do these in like a particular order or anything. Just kind of do them however you want to. And you can press as many or as few at a time as you want. Then I cut out the logos a little bit and then I'm going to use some heat tape and all I do is I put some heat tape on the back of these so that I can tape on either side of the circle. Then I hold my circle up sideways and I put my logo on it and then I just use the light in my room. You can use a flashlight, whatever you got, to see through that circle and then what you want to do is press it down and press that heat tape down and that's going to hold your circle in place. We're going to do that for each of our circles and we're going to be using our Cricut mini press for this. You can use a large heat press if you prefer. I just for me personally like to use the mini press when I do these. It's just personal preference. There's no right or wrong way. Um, but when you're using the mini press you want to have it set to the third setting so you'll have all three lights on. I'm going to let that heat up. I'm going to finish placing these and then I'll show you how to press the sublimation design to your circles. Now when you're pressing these you'll want to put some butcher paper between your press and your design just to keep that bleed through from happening. So I just typically cut out a small sheet of butcher paper and then all I'm going to do is press these and I usually press them for about 30 seconds or so, sometimes 45. You can kind of check and see how it's doing um, by just making sure you're not like melting the heat and bond because that's important that we don't melt that. So I'm going to go ahead and press this one and I'm not really sure how long I've been pressing so I'm just kind of guessing. Um, but typically I press them between 30 and 45 seconds. So let's take a look and see how this one looks and you can just sort of peel back the corner to see if it's pressed. It's pretty light so I'm going to go ahead and press for just a little bit longer. I normally don't recommend doing that because you might end up with some ghosting 
but because this is just one to test it really quick, I'm fine with it. I just want to see. And then the next ones I will use a timer for. I usually just have my smart device put a little timer on. So let's go ahead and peel this one back so that you guys can see how it looks. So this one is a little bit lighter than I would prefer it to be. So I will time the other ones, but you can see it's pretty cute. It's not perfectly centered. I didn't do the best job on that one, but we'll go ahead and get the rest of them pressed. Like I said, I'll use a timer for the rest. I'm gonna do 45 seconds per, and then we're gonna have really fun logo tags and I'll show you how to put them on. We're gonna put our logo tag on this cute little cow. I prefer to put them on the back, somewhere near the tush. So usually right about here if I'm putting the tag on at all. Now I like to personally um, do it with hot glue. I find that that works really well. It actually um, warms up the heat and bond enough that it really adheres pretty good. So I like to just put hot glue on half of my tag. I don't go too crazy. And then I get the tag lined up where I want it and I press it down where the glue is. And I'm gonna let this section dry and cool down a little bit. And then what I do is I fold this section back and I will glue that section down next. So I'm gonna let this one dry for just a moment or two and then I'm gonna come back and glue the rest. Now that I've let that cool, it's safe to kind of fold this back. And by folding it back, it's gonna allow me to access this other part of the tag. And that way I can put the hot glue on that part. Now I will warn you, be careful, because obviously hot glue is hot. Um, what I do is I put a dab down and then I spread it around with the tip of the gun. And then I just put a little extra. And then I just do the same thing where I fold that tag down and I make sure to press it in to the stuffy really well. And if I have any loose sections like right here, I wait a moment just like I did before and I allow it to cool off enough that I can safely kind of get to that. And then I just take the hot glue gun and I do the same thing. I just get right under there. I add the tiniest dab of glue, but you really don't need to add much because the heat of the heat gun will actually activate the heat and bond as well. And then I just press it and I just check and make sure nothing else feels loose. Everything looks good and tight. And now we have this cute little logo tag on our little cow. It's just a nice way that you can add your branding without having anything like hanging off of it. Really easy to do at home, pretty inexpensive as well. You can get a thing of felt, make sure it's polyester felt for around, I would say 65 cents for a nine by 12 sheet. And then you can print off your own sublimation designs, cut them with your Cricut, all the fun things, and then get everything all ready to go. I think it came out really cute, super easy. And this is just a super fun way that you can make some logos for your items. Now, while I show this on a crochet item, this is great for any kind of soft surface, whether you're making a blanket or a hat or something like that, this could really work well for that as well. If you have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure that you're subscribed here on YouTube. That way you don't miss out on any of the crafty content. I hope you all have a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting.